In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. And since the dawn of creation, God's attributes are seen and known by all. As a building requires a builder, creation demands a creator. And as an outstanding design points to a gifted designer, our amazing universe reveals the glory of an awesome creator. God's wonders surround us, and these marvels reveal much about our creator. Through creation, we glimpse his power and wisdom, his majesty and care. Creation is speaking to those who will listen. I'm Dr. John Whitcomb. Join us now as we explore the message of creation, conscience, and the glory of God. Throughout creation, God's power is displayed. From the new growth of plants in the spring, to new life forming in the womb. Wherever we turn, the Creator's energizing power is unmistakable. He guides the stars in their courses above. He formed the majestic mountains He maintains the beneficial seasons. And in his hand is the life of every living thing. You know, the fact that we have a universe tells us that, that we need a, a creator. Because you see, the universe has a beginning and therefore requires a cause. The energy in the universe has a beginning and therefore requires a cause. And people say, well, you know, if, okay, fine, God made the universe, but then who made God? But you see, God is eternal. God doesn't have a beginning and therefore doesn't require a cause. And that may be a little hard to grasp, but there's nothing irrational about an eternal being. There is something irrational about something popping into existence from nothing, because that violates causality. You know, a famous evolutionist was once asked, you know, where did the Big Bang come from? And he said simply, you know, if somebody ever asks you where mass energy came from, just ask them where God came from. And I think he really uh, said something much more meaningful than he thought. Something had to be eternal. Either mass energy is eternal or God is eternal. Well, science has taught us a lot about mass energy. One of the things is it wears out. Mass energy eternal doesn't make any sense at all. God is eternal does make sense. As we read in that first chapter of Hebrews, the heavens, the whole universe is growing old and wearing out like a garment to be cast off, but thou, O Lord, endureth forever. The Bible explains there's one God who's the creator and the source of all life and energy. The forces of nature are energized and guided by his hand. Who hasn't felt the rumble of an approaching storm and considered God's might? Thunderstorms are an amazing display of the Creator's might. An average thunderstorm pours down several hundred million gallons of water, equivalent to the amount of water that flows over Niagara Falls every six minutes. The same storm releases 10 million kilowatt hours of energy, equivalent to a 20 kiloton nuclear warhead. And large, severe thunderstorms can be 10 or even 100 times more energetic. At any given moment, hundreds of storms are occurring somewhere around the world. This amounts to about 16 million thunderstorms each year. The accompanying light.
lightning illuminates an entire skyline. A bolt may reach over five miles in length, contain over 100 million electrical volts, and soar to temperatures approaching 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit in a split second. Hotter than the surface of the sun. On average, lightning strikes the Earth 100 times every second. Several million bolts reach Earth each day. The tremendous power, the incredible speed, and the glaring flash are clear manifestations of our Creator's majestic power. Thunderstorms are an incredible phenomenon in the atmosphere. They're awesome, they're powerful, they're frightening. They have all kinds of energy releases. That's basically what's happening is a thunderstorm is releasing large quantities of energy in our atmosphere by vertical motions. Thunderstorms contribute a major amount to the water cycle. The hydrologic cycle, water is evaporated from the oceans, it's, the vapor is drifted over the continents, and then it falls as rain, and then flows back into the sea. Thunderstorms are a major part of that cycle where it converts that water vapor back into a liquid water or rain falls to the earth. Lightning and uh, thunderstorms in scripture are often used as a symbol of God's wrath against rebellious people. But everybody has been struck by the awesome beauty of lightning and storm and the smell of the fresh air. Uh, the lightning itself uh, puts together two gases in the air, nitrogen and hydrogen, to make fertilizer. When the lightning stroke goes through the air, it uh, releases the nitrogen in the vapor form and, and absorbs it into the water and it falls down and fertilizes the ground. So our crops are fertilized by the nitrogen produced by thunderstorms. 4,000 years ago, Job pondered the Almighty's display with these words. He binds up the water in his thick clouds, yet the clouds are not broken under it. He stirs up the sea with his power, and by his understanding, he breaks up the storm. Indeed, these are the mere edges of his ways, and how small a whisper we hear of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? So thunderstorms and natural events that are highly energetic, I think they, they're a lesson about if God can do this, what must he be like? While we may not fully grasp this cumulative power, these grand displays should cause all to stand in awe of our great God. Our sun is immense, and its energy output enormous. The core of the sun is a scorching 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. Though the sun is 93 million miles from Earth, sunlight is our main source of energy. Energy leaves the sun at the ferocious rate of 5 million tons of matter per second. This goes on day and night, year after year. There are many examples of God's power in nature. The whole universe came about by His Word. Psalm 33, 9 says that God spoke and it was finished. He commanded and it stood fast. As one good example, consider our nearest star, the sun. The sun